Hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Um, I think this is probably the first video for about three weeks, so I just wanted to apologise for not getting anything out sooner than that. It's been crazy hectic here up in the Highlands and uh, I just haven't had an opportunity to, to sit down and, and video what I've been up to. Um, so yeah, so apologies for that. But in the intervening period, um, I've been absolutely taken aback by the number of new subscribers. Um, I think it's probably something like 200 in, in the space of a month new subscribers to the channel, which is just absolutely fantastic. I mean, it really does give me a real boost for what I'm doing here and uh, it shows that at least there's <laughs> some people somewhere in the world who have a slight interest in what I'm getting up to in terms of railway modelling and uh, tinkering with electric. So thank you very much for that. Um, and tying on to that, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Jason over at Barnabas Junction because I have a sneaky suspicion that with him having recently given me a bit of a shout out on his uh, his new program, um, that that's probably responsible for one or two at least of the people who subscribed. So thanks to Jason and thanks to everybody else involved. And if you haven't seen his programme, he's running every week, I think it's every week, over at Barnabas Junction, a, a live session where um, he talks about up and coming railway modelling uh, YouTube channels. I think he set a bar of anybody under a thousand subscribers, but it's a really great thing that's, that's going on to, to shine some light on those of us who are kind of new to maybe the hobby and new to YouTube. Um, and just to, to get some of our channels slightly better known. So if you haven't if you haven't heard of Barnabas Junction, head over there on YouTube. And certainly if you haven't tuned into his, uh, his new series, please do that as well. Okay, so getting to the actual subject matter of this video then. Some of you might remember that, um, oh, I think it was the end of January, but maybe into February of 2018 this year, um, I did a video on converting a TTS 8-pin chip uh, for use in a 21-pin locomotive. Uh, now that used an adapter, an 8-pin to 21-pin uh, adapter, but with the actual 8-pin socket cut off so that you could solder everything together and basically just use it as a normal 21-pin chip. Um, now, I've done that to a few of them, but since I've done that, I've come across this uh, little adapter here from TTS, I think it's uh, TTS who makes these. Hopefully that'll be in focus. Uh, now these are 21-pin um, breakout adapters, I guess you could call them. They don't have the 8-pin sockets, so there's no need to cut them off like I showed in the other video. Uh, and it makes the process of uh, converting a 21, sorry, an 8-pin chip to 21-pin chip use uh, really much simpler. So I'm just going to do a really quick video on just how to do that. And I've got a new Class 20... Class 20... So I bought a second hand, or uh, well new to me, second hand from somebody else, Class 47 recently. Uh, it was in the experimental livery, which is one that I've been after for quite some time. It's probably not one that I'm going to use loads, so I'm not going to stick a, a, a Zimo or a, a Zimo or Zimo or Lock Sound uh, 4 into it, because I don't think it's probably worth spending that much money. But I do like to have sound in the Class 47s. So. I got myself a, another of these Hornby TTS 47 chips and I think the sound of these is actually fairly reasonable. The horn's a wee bit naff, but uh, the, actual, the actual sounds uh, are, are not too bad. The prime mover is all right, but it is an 8-pin and it's a, a Bachmann 21-pin loco. So I'm going to convert this using the TTS, T, TCS, too many TTSs and CSs. I'm going to use the, the TCS 21-pin breakout adapter here. Um, so that I can use it in the, the Class 47 uh, Bachman 21-pin chassis. So I'll set aside the adapter just for a minute and just have a quick look at the TTS chip. Uh, now, I'm sure most of you watching this will have seen one of these before. There's nothing hugely special to the Hornby chip. Um, it comes in a lot of packaging, actually, more than most of the ones that are out there. Um, and we'll just pop that open. Now, the thing about these TTS chips is that the speakers tend not to be that good in them. Now, it's certainly in this, this older style, it comes with this round speaker. And there is a, I mean, they've got a use. Sometimes it's the only thing you can fit in, particularly in some of the, the steamers. Um, but I, I'm not going to use that for the install, so I will take that off. But for this video, I'm just going to leave it in place and I'll not go through the, the soldering and installation because I've done that in other videos and other folks have done that in videos too. So we'll just have a, a quick look at the actual chip itself. Um, it is their standard TTS chip. They all kind of look the same. They come with the speaker hardwired on 
um, and then they have the, the harness going to the 8 pin plug here. So what I'm going to do in this uh, this little installation video is just to, to cut off this plug and then solder the, the actual wires onto the adapter here. Now it is pretty straightforward, the, uh, the adapters come with a load of little letters down the side which should correspond with the colours of the wires here but the one problem is that uh, well there's two G's for starters because you get a grey and a green um, and uh, unless you've got a multimeter and you've got time to to look at a wiring diagram and follow it around you might have to spend a wee bit of time working it out. So what I have done and I will make this available for download is I, I've knocked up a, a quick uh, schematic here for this particular TCS adapter showing the, the the colors here so you can forget about the actual uh, the actual letters and just follow the colors so green wire to green wire orange to orange red to red and so on so uh, that's what I'm going to follow it makes it dead easy um, you don't have to, to worry about soldering things in the wrong thing as long as you follow this and I'll make this available for download from from the website Okay, so I'm just going to crack on because there's no point making this, <laughs> this particular video longer than it needs to be with too many, too many jokes and too much chatting. So I'm just going to cut this off. Now, I don't need this plug again, so all I'm going to do is cut it right at the end here so that we can uh, get as much wires as we can. Um, there we go. Brilliant. Set that to one side. Now, what I'm going to do as well is just to, to clean these up and strip them all back. Um, I have my favoured wire cutters here for tiny miniature wires, so I'm just going to use these, strip them back by maybe a mill, um, and then clean them up ready for tinning so we can pop it onto the adapter. Okay, so I have stripped back just a wee bit of the, the sheathing on the wires here, and I'm just going to pop on a, a little bit of liquid flux. Um, this stuff is pretty magic actually, but it's an absolute nightmare if you spill it. Um, I spilled it over the worktop in the kitchen and uh, my better half, uh, well let's say she wasn't that, wasn't that pleased and I was scrubbing it for some time just to get it off. It's incredibly sticky, so, uh, but it, work, it works really very well. So I'm just going to apply a tiny wee bit of flux, you really don't need very much at all, uh, particularly as it's, uh, it's good flux core solder that I use. Um, but it just helps it flow, you don't tend to need quite as much heat um, and with these wee wires that, that's, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to um, add a, a little bit of tinning now onto the wires. People do it in different ways but I find what's quite nice is just have a wee blob of blue tack, stick the wires in, arrange them so they're all separate and then it makes it really very easy just to, to come in and dod a little bit of solder on just to tin but we don't need too much so we'll just do one there, that's okay. And there, and there, okay. right, okay, right there we are. Now, what I'll do is I'm just going to clean these up because when you apply heat to these uh, tiny little wires, there's a tendency for the sheath just to melt back a bit. So I'll just nip the tops of these down so they're all roughly the same length and then we'll come back and set it up all ready for the, uh, the adapter to be soldered on. So just before I move on, I, I assume this is the same with all of the ones as they come from the factory, but this TCS adapter has come with pre-tinned solder pads here, so we don't need to pop any solder on. All I've done is run a, a very small amount of uh, liquid flux onto the top of the pads, so they should be all good to go with the, with the, uh, the wires here. Okay, so again using the, the blue tack just to hold the pieces in place, I've lined up the green with the, the top one here which is green and I'm just going to apply a, a small amount of solder um, just to, to get these together. Now um, this is easier soldering than some jobs like uh, you know, sort of locks in micros or whatever but it's still, um, it still takes a steady hand and you don't want to get too much uh, solder on there otherwise we, we might end up soldering onto the wrong pad. So. There we go, that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is just continue all the way along. The next one is red, then it's orange and blue and so on. And we'll come back a wee bit further down the line once I've made some progress. So that's the soldering done. Uh, one thing that I would mention is that uh, despite having said there was already solder on the solder tabs, there wasn't really enough on it. So what I did was uh, after the, the green one, I, uh, I popped a, a little bit of extra solder on each of the tabs 
let that dry and then I reapplied a little bit of flux um, back onto it and then individually uh, I soldered each one on. Now th there's more room to play with it as I say than some of the tiny wee decoders for, for soldering but there's not a lot so you need a steady hand and just make sure that there is absolutely no solder that goes between any of these so there's clear gaps when there was shorting and also just watch as well that one or two like the white one here as I was soldering it the uh, the insulation just ran back slightly as it got hot so I just had to, to make sure that I shuffled that up so there wasn't going to be any play to, to short it out but anyway that's it all soldered up so what we'll do now is we'll just pop this uh, onto my uh, ESU decoder tester just to make sure it works and uh, then we'll call that quits on, on this particular video so just before I plug it in, actually, what I normally do is to get my multimeter out and just to check for shorts. It's kind of good practice to do that because, well, it's only about 30 seconds uh, work, but if you get something wrong, you might destroy a decoder. So you don't need an expensive one. This is a fluke one, but the cheapest chips ones would do. It just needs to have a continuity tester, which when you click it together will buzz like that. So what I'll do is I'll just move across just to make sure none of the adjacent ones are shorting um, and uh, assuming that's the case then we will switch it over to the tester and uh, see how we get on. Okay so I've got my, my test rig set up here. I've got my uh, customised ESU decoder tester. I've got it linked up to my Z21 with a multi mouse here. So what I'll do is I will connect the, the new uh, adapter here, it's the 21 pin one, so I'll pop that into the 21 pin socket here. There we go, pop that down, that's on, good tight. Um, I have switched off the speaker because this is a 100 ohm speaker and we want to test the, uh, the 8 ohm speaker that's here. I just make sure that we've got uh, no shorts, nothing touching here that might cause problems, no, we're all good. Um, the one thing that I don't like about these uh, TTS, one in fact most Hornby um, decoders, and I probably have mentioned it before, is that the soldering is often not very good. And I do always try to check just for potential shorts because sometimes there's uh, sometimes it's just a hair's breadth between between the copper. But no, that that all looks good. Right, so let's uh, start it up and see see if it works. So best laid plans and all that. <laughs> so the law, I had just packed away my soldering iron thinking, oh, this is easy. This was a really quick one. Plugged it in here, just to give it a wee off camera test run. And uh, while the lights and the sound worked, there was absolutely no motion at all. Um, so I had to get my multimeter back out again and had a wee probe about. And actually uh, the gray motor uh, leg from the 21 pin socket uh, had a dry solder joint to the PCB. So, despite these uh, TCS breakout adapters not being the cheapest in the world, uh, obviously the quality control isn't ideal on them either. So anyway, I popped a, a tiny bit of uh, flux and a wee bit of solder on and it's absolutely fine now, it's working. Um, so, we'll just give it a quick whiz just to, to prove I'm not lying. Um, so let's pop the lights on, there's the reverse here, and there is the forward light. We have got some forward motion and we have some reverse motion and the moment we've all been waiting for, the sound. Excellent, okay, so it works. Um, brilliant. So I'll just dismantle this and uh, take a quick look at what I did and uh, then we'll call it a day. Okay, so just as a very quick recap, we had the TTS decoder and the speaker, which will be changed because this isn't a very good one, but I'll do that in another video or at another time. Um, and we just nipped off the 8-pin the plug from the end of that and uh, soldered all the wee wires onto the solder tabs there. 
Um, so it's actually a pretty quick job. If I wasn't talking to the camera, it would have taken half the time. Um, the reason I do this is that I don't have very many 8-pin locomotives and I am not going to be putting this into an 8-pin locomotive. Um, if you might want to chop and change, you may not want to cut the 8-pin uh, plug off, in which case you could use the 8-pin to 21 adapter if it will fit in the loco. Um, and as I mentioned in the previous video, it, they don't always fit in the loco, so sometimes you need to do this kind of thing anyway. But there we have it. It's a dead simple, easy thing to do as long as you've got a steady hand for the soldering. Um, and then you can use this in, in any uh, Bachman, uh, Bachman 21 pin class 47 that you might want. But one last thing just to mention is don't use this in a, in a Helgen one, a TTS um, decoder, because it won't be able to, to handle the, the current drawing on those decoders. But anyway, simple project. Hope that, hopefully that was helpful. Um, if you've got any questions, please, uh, please pop some comments below or you can drop me an email. And as I said earlier on, I'll make the, uh, the, the actual breakout adapter schematic available online for, for other folk to use it as a reference point. Um, there's no point reinventing the wheel. Anyway, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do and like and share and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Cheerio for now. Bye-bye.